All right, we're at our crossroads here. Something flows swiftly down the pipes. Huh? Oi! <laughs> that head's haunting me. I should have picked it up. Hi friends, it's me, Killshot Kitty, back again with another video. Today we're continuing on with Spirit Hunter. I can't wait to finally hop back into this game again. I feel like it's been forever. It's only been a week, but where we're going right now, it seems like I think there's no turning back. I think we're getting towards the end. Before we get started on Spirit Hunter, I'd like to ask if you can please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button and then hit the little notification bell if you want to be notified of any new videos coming out. Also, if you'd like to catch up on any of the Spirit Hunter videos that are already out, the playlist is right here. All right, friends. It's a spooky Friday. It's time to get this started. I'm ready, I think. Got this. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay. All right. All right, let's see here. Even though this is a residential area, the street is completely deserted. Yeah, that's freaky, actually. There are traces of the name of the store up by the roof. It looks like it's closed now. Okay. All right. Go down. Okay, we're back in with the creepy music again. Let's see. Okay. What's that? Oh, is that still the... There are pitch black stains. Oh, that's the place with the war propaganda posters. They've got some interesting slogans. Slogans? Oh, slogans on posters? Hold on. What the hell are you talking about? If you squint real hard, you can see them. See? See what? The words on the posters that were put up here forever ago, of course. I told you earlier I was born into a family chock full of spiritual power. So I'm good at seeing spiritual stuff. Are you serious? I can do a test read for you. Ask me any time. Okay. Banshee laughs, but can I really believe him? I mean... The stain seems to be old blood. Okay, yeah, we've done this. All right. It's a thick iron door. The keyhole isn't rusted. I could open it if I had the key, which we do. Open the door with the underground shelter key. All right. So we go in. Oh my. Okay. There's a single out of place Buddha statue. Its head has been cut off. Okay. Let's look at it. It's a Buddha statue. The headless Buddha statue is covered in dust. There's a talisman stuck to the neck as if it's taking the place of the missing head. Found a worn out talisman. Awesome. Definitely need that. Okay, got soul power. Yep. It's a big iron box. Oh my. Oh, some of those are real. Oh, some of those are definitely real. Oh, that's real. That's real as heck. Hmm. Hmm, well that's ominous. The box is packed with carelessly tossed Buddha statue heads. <sighs> A real actual head can clearly be seen among them. Like three of them, what do you mean? It's dry and mummified, but going by the long hair, it's probably female. Most likely one of the experiment's victim victims. Oh, so this is where it was. Let's take it and bring it to its owner. Why would you do that? Wait, the head head? I thought you'd say that. Uh, oh, just kidding. Uh, I feel Banshee's gaze on me. New info was added to the spirit file, the box in warehouse one. I can only carry one head. I need to choose which one to take. Fuck. 
I'm assuming we're gonna be taking the only head that's actually real in here. Hopefully. All right. Great. I just have that in my pocket now. Is that what? All right. Okay. A trail of blood leads to the ladder at the entrance. Was someone trying to escape? I think I saw that already. All right, we're at our crossroads here. Something flows swiftly down the pipes. Huh? Oi! <laughs> that head's haunting me. I should have picked it up. Whose idea was this? It's a thick iron door. The keyhole isn't rusted. I could open it if I had the key, which we do. Okay. This is terrible. Oh. I can hear a victory chant coming from the other side of the intersection. Keep going? I shrug and keep moving forward. Shrug! I take one step forward and... Oh god an electric current runs through my body and my muscles seize up okay you lay about what are you doing there you have time to be loafing around do you recite this basic slogan at once uh oh i don't think i asked banshee to do that oh boy cheer for the final battle in the homeland Uh, 100 million honorable deaths sounds- Luxury is the enemy, give birth for the sake- No, no, no. I'm pretty sure it's everyone- They're very violent. Okay. One more! Declare our resolve to strike back with air raids! We won't lose even in our country's re reduced ashes. Show your determination! Suppress your desires until we win. Send forth a, a hundred million fireballs to the land of the gods. Well, obviously, with all the Budok statues, it has to do something with gods. Okay, cool. Ooh, okay. Our army has fought bravely from the southern tropics to the northern Arctic. But the tide still hasn't turned in our favor. What do you think? Can we win this crusade? Uh... We should surrender. There's a chance of the kamikaze wind blow. Well, this sounds way more absolute than the other two. They, s I, I don't know. The other two seemed very obviously not the right one just because like they seem very passionate about murder. Okay. You're pretty promising for a new recruit. Keep a good eye on this squad. Farewell. Who was chanting though? I didn't see anybody. Oh, I was trying to look at the map. Oh boy. Uh, okay, we'll just go this way anyway. Um, looks like there's a door. What does that say? Something's written on the wall in blood. It says, I, oh, it's that, it's that God, isn't it? Human bones. It looks like the person was crushed to death. How? Okay. We're going in. Let's go. It's the operating room in the southern section, but on this table is... How 
about that? A dead body. A headless corpse is lying there. He is very indifferent about everything, isn't he? Okay. We're It's missing not only its head, but also all of its limbs. What kind of torture was this? A headless corpse. Going back where remains of its clothing, it was likely a woman. A headless corpse is lying on top of the operating table. The head I picked up earlier might fit on this corpse's neck. Should I try attaching the head? Yes. I try attaching the human head. The human head fits the severed neck perfectly. Oh boy. This world suddenly distorts. Great. Oh my. A horrific scene appears before my eyes. This is the woman on the operating table. Some kind of experiment is being performed on her. I must be seeing the past. Oh dear God. The sound of us uh, triggers a change in views. Men in lab coats holding surgical tools, but they don't look like they're alive. The ghosts of the researchers seem to be stuck forever in the nightmare of the past. I can hear the men whisper from my left side. Hey, she's awake. Don't worry, she'll be dead soon anyway. True enough. Then something else interrupts. You. This time it's a cold whisper from my right. You can hear me, can't you? Don't be afraid. Soon. The voice on my right cuts off and I can hear the men in lab coats again. Oh boy. Hey woman, which of these tools do you want to you, us to use to cut your neck? If it's anything like the other rooms we've searched, they said that it looked like the neck was cut, like cut open by a chisel, right? Or like a, a something that carved stone, like a chisel. Uh, this is this is it for you so we'll let you decide great ah yep see i'd rather it be a saver but you know haha <laughs> good answer you're pretty smart oh god unfortunately you'll soon be saying goodbye to that clever head of yours it's valuable material. We'll cut it off nicely. Shut up. You're just like a pig. This is why I hate handling women. Be patient. We finally found a clue. Not yet. Wait. Now give you power. The whisper from my right falls silent. Yeah, I never dreamed breaking from our usual method would go so well. Hey, pig, do you understand? Do you know the correct combination of head and body for the heavenly Buddha? I think it's female head, male body. My grandma used to have some Buddha stuff. And that would be my guess. Okay, precisely. And that's why we need your head. Gladly offer it up for the sake of our beloved country. The problem is the soul freshness. Regardless of refrigerator, it's all up to the quality of the cut. Okay. Though there are only so many available methods, this is all the equipment we have. Then to the freezer. The voice is on the left cut out. A determined voice echoes in my right ear. Hate 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 this whole world tear it to pieces the power to do that i'll give it all to you in the place where you hear me now hate them destroy them understand oh i guess yes which yes is right maybe all of them who knows good destroy them Oh, when I return to my senses, I'm standing beside the operating table. Just then, something slides out of my hand of the corpse on the table. 
out of the hand of the corpse on the table. Oh boy. Got small key. What I just saw. No, more importantly, the voice that keeps speaking from my right side. Who was that? Was it you? You don't look so great there. Did you see something by chance? Yeah, actually. I explained to Banshee what I just saw. A horrible tragedy happened here in the past. It's possible that whatever triggered it might have been whoever that voice belonged to. Uh, interesting. Can't say I'm surprised something like that happened here. So, what's that have to do with our marks? Well, I'm not sure about that part, but... Banshee's right. This isn't helping us accomplish our goal. We need to search for whatever gave birth to the spirit. Let's keep looking. The small key I just found might belong to the cabinet here. I turn my attention to the mark on my wrist. It isn't coming yet. I glance over at Banshee, but they don't seem to be acting differently at all. Death should be slowly closing in on us, but it seems like we still have some time. What's important right now is making sure we survive. New info is added to the spirit file. Mysterious human experiments other. I should probably take a peek at those. Oi! Can you stop? It's a rusted filing cabinet. I open the door using the small key. Inside is an old gun and some research rec records. Suddenly, berserk, severe damage, sutra chanting, complete insanity. Only those who have made themselves deaf manage rem sane. Oh, managed to remain sane, maybe? Half spiritualized, like disposal vat. Need sacred object, attack, destroy human head. The heart of all this, need to destroy human head. That's all it says. Got gun with blanks, research records three. All right, let me check my bag. All right. Okay, what I did was I went back to the mansion and I picked up Hidu. Okay. What's up? That? That's a lot of bloody hands. The door is stained with blood. Upon closer look, it's countless hand handprints. But the keyhole is perfectly fine. I should op I could open the door if I had the key. Oh, this one just made me go straight in. Uh, inside the room are a number of Buddha statues. They are all missing their heads. It seems this is where they stored all the various statues they gathered through theft or donations. It feels like something's here. M maybe this is where the heart of the curse or, or the source of the spirit is. Huh. I brace myself for input from the other me. But it doesn't seem like that's happening. Does that mean I should already know? I, I guess. The statue with its head cut off it looks like it held a weapon in its left hand it's a statue that looks like a vid yaraha or something it's missing one of its arms as well as its head okay okay i'm not crazy then i was like uh it's a vice ravana statue it's missing its head it's a statue with its head cut off it seems to be holding some kind of buddhist ritual implement it's a statue that seems to be a divine general. Its head has been severed. It's a statue with its head cut off. It's lying pitifully on the floor. Cool. It's a statue that looks like a divine general. It has armor from the Tang Dynasty. I search all the statues. Every statue here has a male body. So they only female heads. Suddenly, there's the sound of movement from within that box. Okay. It's a big iron box. <laughs> I managed to open the box. Sheets of white paper are inside. They seem to be a multitude of talismans. 
Was something sealed here? Hiru peers into the box beside me. So, was something in there? Well... Uh... Oh, why is it getting dark? My voice sounds distant. The cause of the curse? What birthed the spirit? There's nothing like that here. No. No, there's nothing here. What? What do you mean? Then what's that in your hand? Huh? Hiru is right. It's not true that there's nothing inside. There is one thing. I never would have expected something like this. Something that doesn't belong here. A box sealed by talismans has enshrined a... Western style cushion. Hiru sighs, disappointed. Guess we're out of luck. No way this thing gave birth to a spirit. True. But, but the state of this room and the voices, something important was definitely sealed up in this place at one point. Yet there's nothing here. New info was added to the spirit file. The Buddha statues in warehouse number two, other. Then the thing we're searching for. Oh, where the hell did it go? A long silence falls between us. It is then that a now familiar pain flares up. Oh, good. The mark burns scarlet. It immediately is dyed a deep crimson. Crimson. Crimson? Dawn, death is only a few minutes away. What? Uh, what's going on? Is death closing in on us all of a sudden? No, it's... The spirit is here. Oh boy. A low sutra chant hum trembles the air. It feels like my whole body is numb, and maybe because of that hum. Consciousness. Yashiki shoots the gun with blanks. I grab the gun, but I can't control my hand. It turns the gun toward my head and fires. The blank explodes. My consciousness fades. There's a strong ringing in my ears, and it's preventing me from hearing the sutra chant. Hiru is clutching their head like they can't hear anything either. Oh, good. The numbness has faded. Uh, Hiru shakes the Kagura Suzu bell. Nothing happens. Yashiki was injured. Oh, my. Really? We just can't keep using the bell. Keep using the bell. Yashigi shoots. A uh, soldier is wounded. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. Shakes the yes, and the bell I think brings them back to okay, turn solid again. Oh god, we're both injured. Oh boy, oh. oh, is it okay? Sword, short blade? Okay. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. And then use the bell. Okay. You're back. Oh boy. We're both really injured, it looks like. Oh boy. Ugh. What in the heck's happening to your face? Uh. Okay, so I guess they're close enough for the sword now, right? Yeah? And the bell, maybe? Okay. Slashes. Wounded. The spirit fades and becomes intangible. Okay, he's back. Right? The spirit stops. I guess the attack finally worked. Out of nowhere, footsteps approach behind me. 
A voice yells comically, and whoever it is puts their hand on my back. But I can't take my eyes off of the spirit before me. Banshee, is that you? What are you doing? Instead of replying, he shoves something into my hand. It's a large chisel with a grip stained in blood. Th this is... I found it in that room in the mansion. Why was... In that instant, I understand everything. The heart of the curse that we were searching for. The object that gave birth to the spirit. So it was kept in Cujo Mansion? Thanks, I'm going to use it. Oh boy. I grab the chisel and face the spirit. I guess we'll use the large chisel with the bell again? Okay. Right eye, left eye, between the eyes. There's no eyes, except for those two, I guess. Right ear, left ear. So the... I hope this isn't a weird puzzle. I hope this isn't a weird puzzle. Because, okay. That thing was whispering in my right ear. They were talking about being deafened. The right ear was saying something. I'm... Like, that, that weird whisper was in my right ear. The, the other dudes were in the left ear, so the right ear... I, I don't I don't remember seeing anything about eyes recently. I'm just gonna I jabbed the chisel at its right ear. It stares at me dispassionately. Finally it smiles and disappears. I feel like it's perpetually smiley. The statue stops moving and collapses. It stopped, right? Seems so. I don't get the mark anymore, so there's no doubt about it. Once again, I'm the only one still cursed. What? Glad I made it in the nick of time. If my legs weren't in such good shape, it would have been over for us. Thanks for saving us, but you know what? That was pretty reckless. I thought I said it's dangerous for a group of mark bearers to go somewhere haunted. Ah, uh, yeah, you did mention something like that when I was eating. Completely slipped my mind. I mean, I... Tell us, old man, what happened at the mansion? I'm not quite sure myself, but I'll tell you what I know. After you left, I wandered the place looking for something to eat. My mark hurt like hell right by a room. I slipped inside and found a bunch of chisels and things. You must mean that room I found. I was kind of out of it because of the mark at that point, but I noticed one of the chisels was glowing all weird with the dark light. Because he had that vision thing. I knew right away that was hiding some awesome spiritual power. But what made you decide that you had to bring the chisel here? You seemed sure it'd be effective against the cannon soldier. I heard a voice when I picked it up. It reminded me of a lady, sorta. It said to bring the chisel to you. And that's when it hit me. It was what I've been looking for. Oh, that, that thing you mentioned in the car. The heart of the curse that created the spirit. Exactly that. So I hooked it over to give it to you. When I looked through the room before, Yasuoka said the Kujo family used to create Buddha statues a long time ago. It's possible that Chisel would use to create the statue that became the Can Soldier. I don't know what the voice was that he heard. Probably something like the mysterious voice that's guided me before. You know, I haven't heard it in a while. And that's what happened. So we heading back We heading back to the mansion then, Yashiki? For one, I'm hungry, but I bet da Damon's worried too. I left without saying a word after all. Yeah. Searching for documents on the mark, catching all the statues out. It'll take more than a day to do all that. We should go back to the mansion and figure out what to do next. Oh, uh, what? We're leaving already? I wanted to examine this place. I glance at the statue falling to the floor. Sorry, but you'll have to do that another time. Uh... Fine. In exchange, not one word about this shelter to anyone else. I'm going to study every inch of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hey, 
hell? This is my home. Can't have you rooting around here. That's just you saying that. You don't legally you don't legally live here. I'll bring you food, so I'll stop complaining. Much obliged. We we return to the concrete passageway. I might be imagining it, but it feels like the air in here is a little less stagnant than it was before. We climb up out of the manhole in M no South Alley. Oh, Damon runs up to us, drenched in his sweat. He looks even worse than usual. He probably shouldn't have run. <coughs> I found you. Hey, old man. Why did you suddenly sprint out of the mansion? My mark is gone now, too. What in the world happened? I had something to give you, Shiki. Is it not right, Hidu? I guess I'd rather not think of the consequences if you hadn't made it in time. I'm not sure I follow, but it seems he really helped you out. Well then, if I must do my investigation another day, are we splitting ways here? Our marks are gone now. Y Yoshiki still has his though. This all this always happens. I'm used to it. But now I might be able to change that. I finally discovered what the statues where the statues stolen from H Shrine are. I'm lost, but I'm glad for you. <clears throat> it's all it's thanks to all of you. I'll figure the rest out by myself. You should all return to your regular lives. You're saying we should split up then? Uh, you sure you'll be okay? Something will work out eventually. Besides, this is Sayakujo's dying witch. I want to respect it. Huh. Well, thanks. I'll head back then. I've been missing all those chemical smells from the lab. Good to hear your research is exciting. But don't forsake your humanity over it and end up like Miss Zoo. Like I do that. It's not even funny, by the way. Oh, yeah, Mr. Yoshiki. Whenever you want to get those statues, I'll help out. Until then, see you. I feel anxious. I'll be off as well. Honestly, all this has put a strain on me. <clears throat> I'm barely staying upright. <sighs> Whatever you do, don't collapse on your way home, please. Hey, Yoshiki. One day, I'm hoping to let the public know about the underground shelter. For the sake of the wandering souls without a proper burial. I'd like it if you helped with it. See you around. Guess I'll go too! You're... You're not returning to the shelter, are you? I'm not that brave. The soldier's gone, but there's plenty of other things down there. I'll give you a few days to settle. So you're still planning on going back? I'm not sure I'd call that a smart move. Com comes with living this kind of life. I'll bunker down in a park or under the bridge until things calm down. See you, Shiki. Bring more food next time, yeah? <clears throat> the former Mark Bears have all left. I should probably head to the mansion myself. I've got to decide what to do next. Uh, I hear a voice calling from behind me. I turn to see Banshee in the middle of the road, staring intently at me. What's wrong? Uh, I remember now. His eyes are as wide as saucers. <clears throat> I forgot because of the mark, but I... I've met you before. Huh? What? What do you mean? Uh, well, let me think. He scratches his chin. I know his memories are probably all a mess having just gotten them back, but I don't have time to wait for him. Ah, yes. We first met five years ago, and then again ten days ago. I feel like I've been struck by lightning. I first arrived at Kujo Mansion ten days ago. That means I met him before I lost my memories. I need you to know... I, I need to know, who in the world am I? I, I? I couldn't say. I wasn't interested in asking your name and you didn't give it. Then tell me what do you do know. Tell me about myself, please. Hmm, okay. I owe you for the food, so ask. What should I ask about? Oh, uh, I guess five years ago? You should... You showed up at the shelter, wanted to know about the Heavenly Buddha Project, gave me food. Huh, 
actually. You were more focused on the Kujo family than the cannon soldier. Why did we talk about them? The head at the time was majorly involved in the project. He was famous for his spiritual power, so the army asked him to help. He loaned them a number of his family's prized sacred treasures. You really zeroed in on that bit. Do you know what exactly the army got? Yeah, the soldier had a list, or shelter had a list. A mirror, a chisel, Buddha statues, cursed objects, and holy talismans. They were all returned to the family. Which means they're all in this mansion now. You kept popping by a few times until one day you just didn't. I only saw you next 10 days ago. Next is... I just seen the cannon soldier and you can bet I booked it out the manhole. I ran into you on the street. How'd you treat me to food to celebrate? Thanks for that, by the way. Banshee's talking about the person I was before I lost my memories. It's weird to hear about myself this way. You'd mentioned you'd been overseas. You'd only come back recently, about a month ago. Oh, and that's when I learned of the mark. You told me about it. It slipped my mind until just now. By that time, was my right arm... Yeah, it had the mark. You were acting all odd, though. You'd go to remember something, then stumble over the words. The curse was probably in the late stages. In fact, I'd completely forgotten my name and, pa uh, and passed a few hours after that. By the by, I've got something to tell you. This here Banshee Ito is of much nobler character than regular folk. That's why I lead a detached life, away from the world's vulgarities. What are you trying to say? I could be crazy desperate, but I'd never shame my dear departed mom or divine providence. You understand? No, you lost me. I'm saying I'd never resort to stealing, even dying of hunger. Here, these are yours. He pulls out a wristwatch and a wallet. Each looks like an antique. They're inlaid with subtle designs. You forgot them at the restaurant. Let me see them. The heck? I grabbed them both and rushed to open the wallet. But there's no ID inside. What? There was no driver's license or company card with an ID in it when you got it? Don't ask me! You said you forgot your old wallet somewhere and lost it. It was probably in there. Oh. I look at what else is in the wallet. Bills, coins, and a number of familiar business cards. Saya Kujo, Spirit Healer. Ah, uh, those things. You tried to give me one. Told me to go there if I remembered anything. But I gave it back. I don't make a habit of carrying useless stuff. Saya Kujo's card was in my pocket when I first arrived at Kujo Mansion. It must have been the one Banshee returned. There's no doubt about it. I lost all my memories after I met Banshee. I've asked everything I want to know, but something's still bugging me. Did I say anything about the mark when you saw me 10 days ago? Hmm, well, I was so focused on eating that I wasn't paying full attention. Are you kidding? Oh yeah, you said the same thing as Hiru about the cannon soldier. There's no way a human head on a statue will make it move. But it did actually move. That's what I thought too. And then you said something strange. You said what happened 50 years ago uh, wasn't part of the project. It was all because of her. Her? Who? That's not all. You said she gave you the mark. That she loved watching you lose your memories and fear death. You made her kick the bucket once, but she came back to life. You said you needed to do the same thing done 50 years ago to get rid of her. Huh? My heart wants to beat out of my chest. I can feel sweat run down your face. Or my face. There's no way I can keep calm. Before I lost my memories, I'd known who had cursed me with the mark. Hey, old man. <clears throat> Who's she? Did I tell you? I wanted to know too, so I asked. But you couldn't answer me. I don't think you were trying to hide it. You just honestly didn't remember. Was that because of the mark? Well, that's about all I can tell you. Yashiki, we should get going soon. Go where? I'll tell you in my car. Or in your car. I'm real tired of standing. I'd like to sit for a bit. <clears throat> There's no point arguing here. I'll just get it out of him uh, once we're in the car. I see what he did. <laughs> He weaseled his way into going home with me. Okay. Return to Cujo, yes. Maybe. Nope, the mansion's 
out of the way. Huh? Banshee clambers into the back seat of the car. His heavy scent fills the enclosed space. I can finally catch my breath. Now then, driver, take us to the forest by H Castle. What? Okay. I drive down the familiar road. All lights along the way are strangely green. We reach our destination without me having to slow down the car once. The engine chugs along. <clears throat> I feel the wheels of fate turning like those on the car I'm riding in. Ten days ago, I promised, in exchange for you buying me an extra order of almond jelly, if you did it, forget everything, I take you to H Shrine. Sounds like I prepared for everything, but if I was that careful, why didn't I leave myself a clue? Why prepare if I was just going to forget? Did the curse progress faster than expected so there wasn't time? Or did someone get rid of it? <clears throat> but if I had business at H Shrine, why didn't I go there while I still had my memories? Something about timing? Waiting for some magic summer cle cleaning to clear away impurity? Huh? <gasps> Suddenly, my old self echoes in my head. I speak the words out loud slowly as realization dawns. The summer purification rites. They're rites held at shrines to exorcise evil. On the last day of June, you pass through woven reeds to cleanse yourself. I was trying to use that ritual to exorcise the impurity. Ah, gotcha. Luckily, today's the 1st of July, so the rites or whatever are done. Should be no problem now. Exorcise the impurity, huh? What kind of impurity was I trying to cleanse? The more I learn, the less I understand. My previous self is like a complete stranger to me. How many times have I come to this forest now? The creepy arch and thick trees look the same as always. You know where each shrine is, yeah? Lead the way! Okay, you've never- you've never been there? First I heard of it was 10 days ago. Okay. Banshee and I push through the vegetation and make our way down the beast trail. We pass under the stone tory gate. and finally arrive at the desolate H Shrine. The few headless Buddha statues that are left shine in the light of the flashlight. So the statues used in the project were stolen from here? Yeah, that's right. Is it really true that statues are connected to the mark somehow? <sighs> I've come considered the possibility that the mark was caused by their divine wrath, but 10 days ago? <laughs> You said what happened five, 50 years ago wasn't because of the project. It was all because of her. This course I've been following this whole time. Then at some point, I had to have been fed some huge lie. But what could it be? I, a shudder runs through me at the thought. It feels like I'm looking into the depths of hell. Y you said 10 days ago that the altar holds something important. Something about needing to keep it here to exercise the impurity. He approaches a small altar and puts his hand on the sliding door. Huh? Oh, it's him. What's going on here? The thing's empty! Oh god. Don't ask me. It was already gone when I was here earlier. Well, that's darn weird. You said there was a cloth pouch. What was inside? A small fist-like statue. A Nenji Butsu or something. It was the Goshin type for the shrine. The Kujo head used it to, uh, in the shelter to stop the mess 50 years ago. And again, it's the Kujo family. They must have strong ties to the mark. Well... Well, this is about all I can do for you. At least it was enough to pay off the dessert. We should head back, son. Right. I'm still unsure about what my old self was thinking, but it's clear whatever plan I had didn't work. Where did the Nenji Bitsu go? On the way back, I feel reluctant to go. I keep turning to look toward the shrine. Each time I do, Banshee hurries me onto the forest entrance. Well, this is where we pop part right ways. You're not going to ride back with me? 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I got a bit car sick on the way here. Flat roads were fine, but the curves and hills did me in. I just got a nice meal and I hate to throw it all up, so I'll walk back. Okay, but it's but it's pretty far from here. Kids are such wimps these days. When I was young, I used to walk across the Himalayas all the time. <clears throat> This ain't nothing. Ha ha ha. His laugh is loud enough for the whole forest to hear. He waves and leaves me alone. Once he's out of sight, I get into the car. I pull out the deserted parking lot and drive back to the mansion as i count the street lights passing by i go over everything banshee told me 50 years ago in the shelter the cannon soldier went berserk but it wasn't because of the army's experiments it was her the army was unable to stand up to the threat of her and the soldier but the kujo family head used the ninji butsu to settle everything However, she still exists in this time period. She was the one who gave me my mark. Before I lost my memories, I was planning on using the Nenji Butsu like they did before. I left it at Eight Shrine so it could be cleansed of its impurity, but somewhere along the line it went missing. The past me probably couldn't have predicted that would happen. Wonder who they're talking about. I'm almost back at Kujo Mansion. As my drive comes to an end, I focus on what the most important detail is. That's right who she is I have a hunch about her identity but I can't be sure yet and that definitely proves that she was there 50 years ago she made the cannon soldier move down in the shelter the Kujo family's head sealed her they would have brought her to the mansion the sacred objects for the project of which she was one were returned to the Kujos I grip the steering wheel tighter. If there were any way to defeat her, it just has to be in the mansion. I don't have any solid proof, but the fragments of my memories are whispering to me. The box? Looked l human size or like little person size, like child size. Huh. The entrance doesn't look any different. My mark burns. The sharp pain nearly brings me to my knees. It seems she has no intention of hiding her presence any longer. New info was added to the spirit file in pursuit of the truth. Where am I supposed to go at a time like this? She's right over there. Where? Okay. I know who she is. It's her. I f knew it. So we meet again. Mary's voice is soft. I know now. Behind those words is hidden an intense lust for blood. You came back to life rather quickly. You gave me nearly a whole day, more than enough time. I admit that Rabbit's attack surprised me, but unexpected events can themselves be rather enjoyable. When I brought Mary to H Shrine, we caught sight of the Rabbit there. It might have suspected Mary's true nature. That Rabbit, its great love for you pushed it into recklessness. What was that Rabbit really? Determine that for yourself. Who are you? Know that, and the answer will come. Though it is impossible so long as you bear the mark I gave you. Mary, why? Mary, why? Mary! Mary gave me the mark. I had a hunch, but hearing it from her lips fills me with dread. Just what are you trying to accomplish? Dragging the living to the depths of despair before killing them. 
I believe I explained that it is a that it is a spirit's utmost desire and joy, and I had your cooperation with achieving that. Cooperate? That's still ridiculous. Oh, have you not realized yet? You did bring those pathetic mark bearers directly to the spirits, did you not? Yup. They feared the spirit's existence, trembled in the face of death. I savored the taste of that fear and despair. Most delicious. You had all of us help out. Just to terrify the mark bearers even more? Clearly, I could have waited for the curses to complete if I only wanted them dead. That is not the only lie. Mark bearers must stay in small groups. Do not contact outsiders. All my instructions were to drive you into a state of emergency. And not once did you doubt me. I bet she's telling me all of this because she wants me terrified with how hopeless the situation I find myself in is. I'm frozen in place and I know my face must be as pale as death. She must be loving this. Don't tell me you created all those spirits just to accomplish that. Indeed, when Lady Christie believed divine wrath was the cause of the mark, I had never been more amused. Her foolishness was so delightful, I just had to come along with you. So you lied. Of course. How could I pile how could a pile of broken statues possibly do anything? I could be imagining it, but I feel like she hesitated for a moment there. Fifty years ago, I was sealed away by the head of the Cujo family. I awoke here five years ago. At the time, I was still unable to speak and communicate, but it seems my awakening alone caused a number of ripples. Those who died unfortunate deaths on cursed land became monstrous spirits. The H Elementary abuse, the honeybee mass suicide, Seiko's assault and suicide, they all happened five years ago. I, f I finally regained my full power a little over a month ago. Then the Buddha statue connected to me 50 years ago before began moving. The woman killed by the statue was also influenced by my power. That must be the cannon soldier in Zukawa. Zukawa believed it was divine oracle from the soldier when it really had been Mary. She did as the great Asura said and transformed herself into Miss Zu. Once my strength returned, I again bestowed my power on spirits. It connects humans to me and manipulates them into a panic. A mark? I know you've been toying with us, but, well, was there really a need to make us connect to you in some way? Of course. By being in direct contact with you, I could taste your fear. Even now, are you scared of me, Lord Yashiki? Mm. I'm gonna say no. Very admirable. Uh-oh. Her porcelain face cracks. Why? Ever since you declared that you would fight the mark, I've waited eagerly for this day. Mary? Over the past ten days, I have tasted your fear through the mark. Thick and syrupy, as sweet as honey. Each savored morsel made me want to smash you to pieces. But I waited. I am not so foolish as to kill a goose that lays golden eggs. Mary? Ah! Uh, but I cannot take it anymore. Like crushing a ripe fruit and ripping its juices. I want to break you down and savor your sweet fear. Oh, God! Okay. The mark has died a deep crimson. Sunrise. A few minutes left until death closes in. Oh, God. My thoughts blur together suddenly. What happens to a mark bearer right before dawn? I've seen it many times. Is that what's happening to me now? Lord Yashiki, wait for me. I'll kill, kill. I can hear Mary stand up over by the sofa. At this rate, the rabbit's fate will be mine too. I have to run away. Where? Check within the red in my room. Is Ku... Is Saya Kujo talking to me? Is she the one who's been talking to me this whole time? Something whispers in my ear. That's right, that voice. 
but what does my room mean focus who does that voice belong to Yasuoka she said it was someone who loved me was Sayakujo and Yoshiki a thing it has to be Sayakujo I'm in the Kujo mans and it has to be it has to be and the red it probably is the dried blood in the room Mary's coming closer where should I run I sprint at full speed up the stairs and fly into Saya's room. Ooh. Much like the entrance hall, it's dark. The voice said, check within the red in my room. Is something there? The blood. But where should I look? The blood? Floor, blood, blood, red, red. Sai Kujo's blood stain is still on the floor. It obviously dried by this point in time. There might be something lying on top of it. it. I can't be sure as it's too dark. Nothing was there the last time I was here. Picking it up, I discover that it's a small pouch. Inside is a hard thin object. I move over to the moonlight to see it better. Oh. It's a small Buddha statue. It can't be. Is this the Nenji Butsu? It seems to be stained with blood, and I get an ominous feeling from it. What happened? The impurity it hasn't been exercised yet. I instinctively know the instant I see it. My mind is suddenly flooded with all of my memories of the Nenjibutsu, one after another. Fifty years ago, the head of the Kujo family used this to seal Mary's power. He put the Nenjibutsu inside her to seal it hurt. Then, about a month ago, someone took it out. That person was me. What? Because of that, Mary regained her powers. The ninjutsu in my hand looks exactly as it did back then, full of impurity. Impurity that's built up from sealing Mary's power for 50 years. To cleanse it, I left the ninjutsu at the uncontaminated H shrine. It would take time to exercise all of the impurity. It's already July. The summer purification rite is over. So why is it still impure? The object the rabbit had in its mouth. It could have been carrying the pouch then instead of the master key. Then the Nenji Butsu was taken away from the A shrine before the beginning of July. Maybe the rabbit saw Mary by the shrine and was scared that she would find it. So I had no choice but to steal it away. The door to the adjacent room opens. Mary must be looking for me. But she can sense the presence of Mark Barris. What's going on? Wait, is it possible that Saya's blood is protecting me? What? Bring it to where I met my end. The voice whispers in my ear again. If this isn't where the voice owner's voice's owner died, they must have met their end some elsewhere. There's only one other place. Where? While Mary's in the room next door, I sprint down to the entrance hall. I make a beeline to Mary's sofa in the spot where the rabbit died. The voice that spoke to me and helped me every time a spirit was closing in. If Saya was working through anything, it must have been that rabbit. Sensing something, I look down at my hand. The Nenjibutsu impurity is gone. Is this what you've been telling me, Saya? I speak to the departed woman who's guided me as I struggle through without memories. But the Nenjibutsu, the source of the doll's curse, press it to the black mark. Then the whispers stop. Uh-oh. The floorboards creak ominously. I raise my head to the staircase, rising into the darkness before me. Oh, God. A dark figure stands on the landing. I found you! I'm so nervous. The mark scorches me. My head goes blank. So press it against the black mark. Mary's coming closer. My body won't listen to me. Stop it! Ah, Lord Yashiki. Mary closes her hands around my neck. She's, she's trying to kill me.
the heck? Huh? I squeezed the Nenji Butsu and the fog that's impeding my thoughts lifts. It's still a struggle to think. I, I should be able to move my arm now. Put the Nenji Butsu on, on the source of the curse. It said the black mark. I only have one chance. Where should I put stick the Nenji Butsu? Her, her mark in the picture was on her right arm, wasn't it? I managed to drag my impossibly heavy arm and stick the Nenji Butsu on Mary's right arm. Yes! She's hiding it. But I'm sure that there, that's where the black mark was. bloom on Mary on one after another they're all the color of blood it's like they're the curses of what those she killed I did it Mary shatters into dust. Did I really do it? I hesitantly look down at my right arm. The mark is gone. I did it? I finally did it. I have to say it out loud to convince myself. A victory at the expense of Saya's life. I can't claim it's completely over, but there's no harm being relieved for now. The fog clouding my head clears away. My memories slowly return to me. I look around the dimly lit hall again. I know this mansion well because I'm... The clock on the second floor begins chiming wildly like it did 10 days ago. Huh? When I make my way to it, it stops. Almost as if it has a will of its own. That's right, this grandfather clock. I think a skilled ancestor of the Kujo family crafted it. That one chisel may have been used to make it. That's right, inside this clock. I open the door and stick my hand inside. My fingers brush something hard. Taking it out, I realize it's a voice recorder. I press the play button. This is Masamune Kujo. It's a man's voice, a voice I know all too well. It's my voice. Oh, you're a Kujo? I decided to leave this record behind in case something should happen. That doll may dispose of any files or documents. I'm banking on her overlooking a piece of technology. As I listen, I start to remember recording this. I'd done it right before I received the mark from Mary. Now, where should I begin? It started five years ago, two years after I became Kujo family head. My sister, Saya. Oh, sister! And I found the doll in a wood box while sorting the warehouse. The moment I broke the seal and saw her, I could sense something sinister, but it took a while longer to fully understand what she truly is. If only there had been records. But great-grandfather who sealed her didn't leave any before his early death. Because of that, his descendants weren't told about the doll. Great. I managed to learn the doll had been loaned to an army lab during the war. A strange old man who lived in an underground shelter told me. Then I went overseas to try and get more information on the doll. But I got into an accident while away and was presumed missing. So Saya became the new family head. I wasn't able to contact her until after she inherited the title. It wasn't something worth contesting. So I explained everything and had her keep up the facade that I was missing. Public records still stated Masamune Kujo was very much alive, of course. I couldn't have used my passport or license otherwise. I'm off topic, sorry. I only just returned to the country last week. Other physics abroad all agreed it would be bad to leave the doll be. 
A ninja butsu inside the doll still suppresses cursed power, but I realized it was almost at its limit. If I left it alone, it would crumble. Then it'd be impossible to suppress the cursed power of the doll. That was worst case scenario. But what was to be done? The answer I came up with was to remove the Nanjibutsu from the doll temporarily. Its impurity would be cleansed after a month stored in a pure area. And then I'll place it back into the doll. If I succeed, the doll's power will be sealed for a few more decades. But the problem is that one month, I have no idea what kind of curse will be released when the doll's unsealed. I'll do what I can to prevent disasters, but my power can't compare to the Nanjibutsu. I can't guarantee er anything. There may be victims again, like the tragedy 50 years ago. But this is a necessary evil. It must be done in order to prevent even more people from falling victim. This is why I don't like porcelain dolls. I'm just saying. After this, I'll disassemble the doll and remove the Nanjibutsu. I pray everything goes according to plan and the worst of evils is avoided. I hope this record isn't needed. But... If the one listening to this has a loved one who's fallen victim to the curse, then I'm very sorry. The recording ends there. Damn it. I clench my fist so hard my nails dig into my palms. Yes, the voice on the tape was mine, but I'm furious with it. I don't know what person at all, or that person at all. The mark has claimed so many victims over the past month. I even lost my little sister, Saya. Was she just another inevitable victim that the voice spoke of? I... I can't forgive him. Ever since I lost my memories, I've lived as Kazuo Yashiki. My blood boils at what Masamune Kujo did. Did we beat the game? Two months have passed. The occasional cool breeze signals that summer is almost over. I've spent my time putting the case of the mark to rest as best as I can. I put Saya to rest by burying the rabbit and contacted the surviving bar mark bearers. Putting the Buddha statues in place of honor was also one of those tasks. They weren't connected to the mark after all, but I couldn't just leave them there. Plus, there was no way Christy would keep quiet about the statues. So with her guidance and Yasuoka, Damon, and Banshee's help, I carried the broken statues out of the shelter and returned them to H-Shrine. By now, my memory is completely returned, but I still can't think of myself as Masamune Kujo. My memories of my past feel more like I'm reading someone else's biography. Legally, I am Masamune. I inherited Kujo Mansion. I'm not sure how to feel about it, but I think I'll consider it a way to pay Saya back for saving me. About Masamune Kujo, he became head of the Kujos seven years ago. Scarily inclined and introverted, he wasn't the type to be very social. He left all public appearances to Saya Kujo, so not many knew what he looked like. The only photos of him are small local newspapers. Masamune accidentally uncovered Mary in the family's warehouse five years ago. That discovery changed his life. I traveled extensively abroad in order to learn more about Mary. In one country, I got into an accident and fell into a coma for half a year. Even worse, that country proceeded to treat me as an unidentified traveler. I don't know if that was merely my terrible luck or if Mary's curse had something to do with it. When I was finally able to contact home, Saya had already become the new head. The rest was as the tape said. I had no idea that Mary's power was far greater than I had imagined. All of my efforts to suppress her power were completely useless. My memories unraveled faster than I thought. How did Mary come to be in the first place? One theory says a doll maker in the 19th century used magic to create her. Another says the spirit of a young girl who died prematurely took up residence in a doll. In the end, it's still a mystery. No one knows what happened to create a doll like that. We only know that each of Mary's owners died tragic deaths. Shortly after the turn of the 20th century, she came to be owned by the head of the Kujos. He either didn't know of the curse or simply didn't believe it. Disasters began befalling the family. 
That would explain why there the, none of the heads of how, the house live for very long. Mary gained enough power to become sentient and produce spirits. Then the tragedy in the shelter happened. The seething grudges of the experiments, victims, and the Buddha statues. They may have triggered her awakening. Whatever Mary's true identity is, the fact remains she altered many people's fates. Mine and the Mark Bearers included. Speaking of, an update on the surviving Mark Bearers. I think all of them lived. Moe Watanabe became a part-time writer for her favorite magazine, Oop Arts Monthly. She sometimes comes to Kujo Mansion to interview me about spirits and ghosts. Tsukasa Yoshida is studying every day for the middle school exams next year. He bragged in his letter to me about how well he did in the national mock test. Satoru Mashida, Mashita uh, bought me a drink like he promised. Seems he's thinking about becoming a private detective. He actually asked me if I wanted to join him. Was he serious? I don't know for sure. Sho Nagashima is picking fights, riding his bike, and doing whatever he wants, as usual. But recently, out of the blue, I heard he's joined his neighborhood's baseball team. Aw. Christy Animuda has started writing an essay exposing all of her past affairs. She's trying to get back into the industry. Suzu Moromiya it, was able to see her father. Lately, she started asking me for advice about how to get her parents to reconcile. I have no idea if I helped at all, but she says that sometimes have meals together now. Eita Nakamatsu has gone back to surfing the BBS every day, as usual. But what's new is he's been stopping by the city employment center. I guess he wants to get a steady job and be a role model for Suzu. Uh, best of luck to him. A day doesn't go by that I don't see Ai Kashiwagi on TV as part of Love and Hero. She sent a ticket like she promised, but I need to drum up some courage to go to a concert for teens alone at my age. <laughs> Tawaka, uh, Tawako Yasuoka is still working as a fortune teller in Ginza. Apparently, she believes I have spiritual powers or something. She keeps sending customers with spirit problems to the mansion. I wish she'd stop. <laughs> uh, Madoka Hidu spends her days working as a researcher while also visiting the shelter. Her and Banshee squabble a lot, but I wish she'd stop complaining to me about it. Shuji Damon seems to be doing better now, like a weight's been lifted off his chest. He's in the process of convincing officials to publicize the shelter and build a memorial for it. Banshee Ito has returned to his beloved underground shelter. He stops by the mansion sometimes, filling the place with his scent. Of course, he comes to beg me for food. Now then. I finish my break and return to the workbench in the corner of the room. What are you doing? What are you doing? Over the past two months, Mary has managed to repair herself. Oh. Uh-oh. Her power hasn't completely come back yet, but she's still extremely frightening. The Nenjibutsu alone won't be enough to continue sealing her powers in the years to come. I must prepare extra spiritual me measures. It's taken a long time to get those ready, but today I've finally finished. Once everything is complete, I replace the Nenji Butsu inside Mary. Finally, it's over. I pick Mary up and put her in a wood box. Five years. This all started when I opened the lid of this box. Mary stares up at me from the depths of the box. I have no idea if she's aware of what's happening right now. But there's no doubt she'll regain her powers when the Nenji Butsu wears out decades from now. I'm determined to find a way to destroy this cursed doll before that happens. Until that day, you need to stay asleep, Mary. Good ending. We did it. We did it. And now, a lot of time has passed. Huh? Huh? 
The muted chirping of insects gently drift along a breeze that enters the mansion. It's cool enough to sleep through the night again. It's nearly autumn after all. Ugh. I stare out the window at the unchanging scenery without really seeing it. Clouds in the distance rumble with thunder. As if on cue, a chill wind brushes up against the window pane. Rain again, huh? I comment because otherwise it feels like I'm in a dream. It's as if a stranger is speaking. I stare at the lead in the sky. Even though I'm resting in a chair, I feel like I'm somewhere far away. Ugh. Then when I shift, I see out of the corner of my eye the stack of books piled on the desk. Some were pretty difficult to get my hands on, but I don't feel like reading them anymore. I could read all of them and none will give any type of clue. That's all I've learned about after all this time wasted. The longer I try, the further away it gets. That thing sleeping in the wooden box. I head downstairs to make myself some coffee. There's a sudden knock at the door. That hollow sound doesn't bring back good memories. I used to signal the arrival of new mark bearers to the mansion. But that's in the past now. I swing the door open. Standing in front of me is... Huh? Oh! Konnichiwa. Hiya! Momo Watanabe. Is now a good time, mister? Oh, if it isn't, just tell me and I'll leave you alone. Yeah, it's fine. Moe flashes a carefree smile and steps inside with a pep in her step. Just her presence makes this place feel less gloomy. With a start, I realize that Moe isn't my only visitor. It's been a while. I'm sorry for coming without contacting you. Tsukasa, this is rare. Why are you here? Um, it'd be a while since we'd met up, so I talked so we talked about what happened. And obviously the topic came to you. So I told him that I visit you a lot and that he should come with me. No big deal, right? I was just getting bored. Of, of course I don't mind. I was just getting bored. Yeah, I figured as much. You seem the type with uh time on your hands. <gasps> the heck? I haven't seen them both together since the mark. I'm always come by sometimes for interviews and the like for an occult magazine. But this is the first time I've seen Tsukasa Yoshida since then. I wasn't really concerned over him, but I'll admit I'm relieved to see he's all right. I'm glad to see you're well. Have you gotten the chance to relax? I have. But aren't you busy with entrance exams? Do you have time to waste... Uh, have time to waste doing this? Breaks are important. As an adult, you should understand that. Yeah, you're right. Huh. I glance over to see Moe staring at me. What is it? It's just... I'm working hard at my job, too. You don't have anything to say? Oh, I know you are. Trust me. Trust me, I know you are. You've barreled your way in here several times already. That doesn't sound very encouraging. But no way am I match, a match for Tsukasa. He works crazy hard. He was first in the recent mock tests. That's only natural. After all, I have a goal. You do? I've never heard him mention it. Or maybe I should say I never expected him to say he has a goal. Yeah, you have something you're trying to accomplish? My parents were lawyers, so I was thinking of entering the juridical pro profession, but... Was thinking, huh? Wait, has he changed his mind since then? Wow, that's a cool dream. Jurassic, so you like dinosaurs too? Tukasa's glare is full of contempt. Not Jurassic Judicial! I'm working and dealing with the law! Are you really in high school, Moe? Ugh. I've never been at a loss for words before. To be honest, now I'm not sure. If possible, I'd like to ask you for your op opinion, mister. Is that alright? I don't mind, but I'm kind of surprised. Who'd think Tsukasa would ask me for advice? That incident I was wrapped up in started it. Now I know there are so many incomprehensible things in the world. I'm considering going into science in order to elucidate them. But my parents, I feel that it would be difficult to tell them. I see, that's what's going on. It's a serious predicament. You don't seem like someone who has much in the way of work experience, but what do you think I should do? Think it over first or tell them now? I'd tell them now. Hmm. It's difficult to say. If he's given the idea serious thought, then it'd be better for him to tell his parents. Parents only want their kids to be happy. They'll support him if that's what he wants. 
So that's why I tell him. I see. I hope my parents think the same way as you. Thank you very much. I feel a bit better now. I have no idea if my advice uh, was really helpful or not, but Tsukasa bows politely to me. Great. You good now? Your future's bright, unlike this old guy here, so don't worry so much. Huh? That's not true. I'm sure he also has a bright. They both look at me. Uh, nope. Can't picture it. But that's what makes him approachable. He's, so he's good to vent to, at least. Dickheads! But there's definitely there definitely are things that only he can do. Honestly, I can't think of any myself. I can make a good pot of coffee, but that's not really what we're talking about. I mean, there's that doll. Tsukasa falls silent. It seems my expression gave me away. Have you not made much progress? Nothing I can share at the moment. I've researched everything I can. Mary's true identity is an elu elusive as smoke. I still ha haven't managed to find clues. So I'm taking a bit of a break right now. I'm glossing over it, but to be honest, any sort of tension has vanished. My rest hasn't relaxed me. It's more like I'm a balloon that's lost all its air. If I was risking my life and facing death every day, it might be different, but right now my de de determination is move forward. Uh, my determination to move forward that I had got back then is gone. I can't read. That's so. I'm sorry. I had no idea. Then it might be best for you to rest and relax a bit. How about a trip to improve your mood? You might get a good idea. I'm about to reply to that one. There's another knock at the door. Who could that be? Yes, who is it? Moe calls out playfully like she lives here and skips over to answer the door. I'm coming in. The brusque voice belongs to. Aha. The S detective Satora Satoru Mashita. Hey, what's all this? When did you start a daycare? Ah, uh, Mr. Mashita, why are you here? Did you come to see us? Mo is clearly excited, but Tsukasa is collected as he bows politely. I'm in your debt for your help back then. Still, I'm surprised. I didn't think we'd be able to meet here. Mashita gives an annoyed shake of his head. I'm the one asking why you're here. Damn, we're going in circles now. Don't lie. I know you're happy to see us. You're always hiding your feelings. Oh, but what a huge coincidence. We've got everyone from the Hanahiko case back together again. This is totally destiny. I feel conflicted seeing her innocent smile. If everyone's happy after such a horrific event, then maybe it'll fade quickly to memory. Hmm, everyone, huh? In that case, one person, no one being, is missing. As he mutters, he glances at a spot in the room. It would be best to change the subject. Oh, is it Mary? So, why are you here? I have something to... I have something to ask you first. He answers me with a question, like usual. Ishiki, you told that fortune teller about my office, didn't you? Does he mean... Tawoka Yasuoka? Yeah, yeah, it might have come up with while I was talking to her about Mary. Why'd you have to go do that? Now I'm drowning under investigation requests. Wait, does that mean... Are you a private eye, Mr. Mashita? Moe butts in, her eyes shiny. She's not timid, I'll grant you that. Wow, I guess you'd be pretty good at that. Oh, if you get an interesting job, bring me along with you. Even Mashita can only blink at her innocence. And this is exactly why it's annoying. <laughs> Still, when I think about it, Mashita's complaints don't make much sense. How could he be disadvantaged by my sharing his info with Yasuoka, who's incredibly famous? He himself said he was drowning under requests. I only told her about your office. What's wrong with that? Getting job requests is good, isn't it? What detective hates too many requests? Plus, he only just started. Even if he's insanely talented, there's no way he'd already be overwhelmed. It depends on what the request... Oh, it depends on what the request is about. The one I just got, it's the worst. Did he just hesitate? Mashita? It's your fault that this happened. So, Yoshiki? Yes? I'm going to have you help me. Help you? Wait a minute, what are you talking about here? 
Can't you guess based on the context? I believe he's telling you he wants your help with a detective job. Wow, I can't really picture him working as a private eye, though. Now, if we were to investigate a supernatural phenomenon, that would be per... Huh? What? Wait, don't tell me this worst request ever that you got. We all hold our breath as we stare at Mashta. Exactly, a spirit might be involved. It's a good opportunity. This is what I heard from that old fortune teller. I didn't beat the game? No, this is totally for real, I swear. I think I saw something real bad on that love hotel the other day. You, you heard about the Red Riding Hood girl? That rumor about people disappearing after entering that love hotel in K-City? On rainy days, this girl stands by the road like she's trying to get customers. Anyone who goes in the hotel with her ends up missing. And here's the kicker. Eventually, they're found, but... Their heads are so messed up, they can't even remember their names. Some end up dying in the hospital and others jump in front of trains. The heck? I totally forgot where I was walking around at night the last time it rained. And there was a girl in a red raincoat there, so I thought I'd chat her up. But when I got close to her... <laughs> tell me, are you... She suddenly started whispering to me. I got real creeped out, so I bolted. No, I'm seriously glad she didn't follow me. Thinking back on it, something was odd. It was raining that hard, but she was the only one who was soaked from head to toe. Later, I realized that raincoat was probably soaked with blood. That's all I was told. I'm sorry, but I must say that sounds like a simple ghost story. The rainy shopping district and the red raincoats rather suspicious. Mashta ignores Tsukasa, looking straight at me instead. It's enough to make me concerned. I'll leave the rest to you, Yoshiki. You're coming with me. I'm bogged down with my other cases. I don't have time to spare. It's your fault that the old lady brought this to me. So you need to take responsibility. What? B but Come on, you can help him out a little. I'll help too. The editorial department might have some info on a case like this. And your investigations needs an assistant, right? Did you learn nothing, Miss Moe? Isn't this what put you in danger last time? Last time. Those words draw my eyes immediately to a certain spot. Don't do that. She's not here anymore. The same thing won't happen. It can't. But somewhere deep in my heart, I'm anxious. Don't work yourself up. It's more likely that it's just a lie. A bunch of it sounds like it was made up. That's why it's such a pain to have an absurd request like this brought to me. Mash is right. It's highly likely the whole story was made up. If I had to point out anything concerning about, about it, it's pretty detailed for just a rumor, and it leaves the same kind of impression as rumors of real spirits. But it's better to be safe than sorry. If it doesn't end up true, then we need to act now, yeah? Huh. Okay, I'll do it. I hoped you'd say that. We better get ready. No, I'm going alone. What? No way. That's not fair. I knew she'd complain, but I can't put her in harm's way. Listen, Moe, I need you to search for info. I've got no way to research these rumors, but you have it, uh, access to a lot more than me. Use your position to gather information. Hmm, I really hate sitting out and watching you do everything, but if that's how I can help Beth, then that's what I'll do this time. If you find anything out, they'll tell me, okay? I promise. It's settled. Mashta takes out a notebook, rips out a page, and hands it to me. The address of the hotel masquerade. It's abandoned now, though. Meet there at 8 tomorrow night. 8 p.m.? I have to go at a specific time? The client set the time. The old lady said she'd call in help. So it's probably a scheduled thing. I don't have to handle this alone then. Plus, this is Yasuoka. I'm sure she has some kind of plan in mind. Well, then I need to get to my other cases. Mashta turns on his heel and vanishes out the front door. But he's just as suddenly back. What's wrong? Weren't you leaving? 
Nothing. Just realize it's a little late for kids to be wandering around outside. Mashita calls out to the other two. Hey, you two. I'll drive you back. So hurry up and get in the car. Oh, is that okay? Then I'll take you up on that. I agree. It's pretty late. Sorry to trouble you. Well then, mister, we'll be going. The rhythmic ticking of the grandfather clock echoes through the hall. How long has it been since those three were at home? I sit down and mull over what Masha told me. I have a bad feeling about this. It's perfectly reasonable to believe it's just rumors, a normal case even, but the more I think about it, the more I'm doubting it. Ugh. I avert my eyes from the sofa. <sighs> I silently ask its absent master a question, but of course there's no way she'd reply. The next evening. I get ready and leave my room with heavy footsteps. The clock says it's six on the dot. It's still early for the meetup time. I guess unconsciously I'm a little impatient. I'm already ready. There's no reason to wait here at the mansion. I guess I'll go. I'll just kill time here if I'm early. I'll learn the truth in and out. It'll be quick. I turn the car key. My mood improves somewhat. New info was added to this profile. Rumors of Red Riding Hood. Other. So another mystery. Chapter six. I had no idea. Because we got the good ending, right? Well, how is there still more? I wonder if this is a lead in into the next game. This is awesome. Oh man, I'm excited. All right, and that's it for this episode uh, for the Spirit Hunter. I, I was pleasantly surprised. We're not actually done with it. How exciting. Honestly. Um, so I guess next video we'll uh, go, we'll start diving into chapter six uh, with the Red Riding Hood. That, that one sounds like it's going to be really interesting, and I cannot wait to see it. I can't. All right, friends. Uh, again, if you like the video, hit that like button and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified for the next part to this. It uh, should be out next Friday. All right, friends. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!